Hi, Jamie Davis from nursingshow.com. I'm here at NTI 2013 with the American Association of Critical Care Nurses and, and the conference I love to go to. And one of the reasons I love to come to this conference is the opportunity to interview people like Tom Ahrens. And I got the name correct? Yes, you did. Excellent, excellent. Tom is a nurse and a critical care specialist. Critical care nurse specialist, yep. And the, um, my technical title right now is a research scientist at Barnes Jewish Hospital in St. Louis. Excellent. Tell us a little bit about your background in nursing because people always, I think, need to get a picture of how we arrived at different places we do in our careers. I think it's a great example. Like, you're a good example. The uh, nursing has so many opportunities that you can take, uh, take advantage of. For example, uh, I started my career as a diploma nurse. Uh, went, got my bachelor's, got my master's, got my doctorate. And every time you do those things, opportunities are open to you. Mm -hmm and you keep looking for things that are of interest to you. Now, critical care jumped at me right away, um, and certain topics within critical care came to me, things like hemodynamics and tissue oxygenation. And what nursing allows us to do in the role specifically of advanced practice nurse is to really learn those topics well. And it, the opportunities that we're able to do, and the NTI is a wonderful example of this, is we're able to speak to national audiences, meet the best people in the country, sometimes the world, uh, share ideas. And so where I am today really is a lot due to ASN. Well, and you're talking about sepsis. You're actually doing two, two and a half hour sessions on sepsis. Uh, why is it so important that nurses, especially critical care nurses, have a handle on sepsis? Well, it's a good example. This is a topic that I got involved in early in my career. Uh, it's a leading cause of death in critical care units and probably in hospitals in general. And because of that, nurses are at the forefront of identifying sepsis. There's no cure for it. Mm -hmm. And the only way to stop it is not let infection start. And that, again, nurses are the centerpiece of that. But if sepsis does occur, nurses have to be quick at identifying it. If they can identify it fast, we can save somebody's lives. And nurses all the time don't realize they're saving people's lives by avoiding infections and by identifying sepsis early. What are some of the things that you hope uh, the attendees at your sessions are going to take away, uh, some key points that you'd like them to remember? Oh, I think it's a good question. There's only a few things to take away. Know what sepsis looks like. So in other words, it's an infection and two or more signs of systemic inflammatory response. You know, they're tachycardic, they're febrile, uh, they're tachypneic, have a high white count. And if they have those things, they have to quickly identify how sick is the person. And so they'll get a lactate level. And if they can do that, they can start to prioritize how much danger the person's in. And if the person does have an elevated lactate or they have another organ dysfunction, they have to quickly intervene, mainly with fluid resuscitation. Hopefully fluid resuscitation works because we don't have a whole lot of treatments. Antibiotics are critical, source control is critical. The nurse has to get blood cultures down to the lab right away. And so the idea would be is if they're able to quickly do those things, they have a chance of saving lives. If they wait even an hour to detect it, mortality changes. It's amazing that that, that time frame is so close, but sepsis is uh, one of our forms of shock, and it's, it's one that the body doesn't really respond very well to at all. No, not at all. The um, sepsis is lethal. Um, when you look at septic shock, it's as dangerous, like you've said, as cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, uh, in many cases, maybe even worse, because there's no effective treatment. Where hypovolemic shock, we often can resuscitate people. Cardiogenic shock, you might be able to do something to support a failing heart. But in septic shock, we don't even really understand the mechanisms of the disease. So we throw treatments at it. But right now, in the year 2013, we're still kind of blindly throwing treatments at it because we don't know what causes it. And it's one of the things that I think a lot of research is going on about. Uh, what are some of the things on the future or on the horizon for sepsis? What are some of the things that researchers are looking at now? It's a great question. Um, a good colleague of mine, Rob Taylor, uh, was the past president of Cytocritical Critical Care Medicine, uh, said every time we do a lecture on sepsis, the next year what we said you told you was wrong because we keep changing what it is that we're learning. Um, we don't have a cure for sepsis on the horizon. What we do believe, if there is going to be some type of cure, it's going to be targeted. Uh, it might be targeted genetically. Uh, it might be targeted inflammatory mediators. Uh, it may be targeted to things like apoptosis. 
unfortunately, those are all still in the experimental phase. Mm -hmm. uh, when you do talks on sepsis, it's encouraging to, to teach nurses to be quick, to recognize it quickly, because then we have a chance of saving somebody's life. If we wait, they get into the ICU with multi-organ system dysfunction, we really have no effective treatment. So I wish I could say we've got a great new treatment coming on the horizon, but we don't. I wish we could say we have a new 3D printing organ transplant mm -hmm. that we could do, but we don't. Um, so hopefully some researcher out there is going to surprise us all and find something that works. Uh, but unfortunately for the near foreseeable future, sepsis is going to be all about prevention. And, and that's uh, the, the um, CMS is focusing on prevention. They want us to make sure that our patients are not acquiring infection in the hospital. And, uh, and so it's early recognition and prevention are the keys. That's exactly right. The, uh, one thing that will help is when CMS makes these a core measure, which I believe will happen next year, hospitals will be more mandated to watch for sepsis. Unfortunately, there's still a large number of hospitals, despite the efforts of the Surviving Sepsis Campaign, uh, which AACN's a part of, we still see large numbers of hospitals not having active sepsis programs in place. Um, I can give you examples of patients I see at hospitals I consult with all the time. Just last week, people saying this person's not sick enough to be septic. Well, what they're talking about is septic shock when they're so sick anybody could tell what's wrong. Sepsis presents initially very subtly. And so the idea being is that what we want to be able to do is teach everybody we can, and the core measure might help, to implement sepsis guidelines in all hospitals. Well, Tom, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we want to make sure we link back to some of your re resources and things when we have in this episode. But I appreciate you sharing some of your uh, knowledge and expertise with the members and audience of the nursing oh, show. Thanks, Jamie. I appreciate it. Hopefully this helps people. And I want to thank all of you. We're going to be bringing you more here from NTI 2013. And as I said, we'll have links in the show notes to some of the things that Tom and I talked about here in this interview. All our video segments here from NTI 2013 are brought to you through the generous support of PhysioControl and their true CPR tool. It's a coaching and management tool for CPR. It gives you real-time feedback, it's simple to use, and it lets you perform high-quality compressions, giving you accurate depth measurement and accurate reporting on the compression fraction and the time on the chest. All of that brought to you by PhysioControl. You can find out more information by heading over to physio-control.com and check out the new True CPR.